Appagabho, this now we are learning the last couple of uh, skillful habits. Appagabho, gabbo is aggression, aggressiveness, non aggressive. Have you seen people who are very aggressive all the time, arrogant, aggressive? What may have uh, caused them to be so? Maybe they are? Lack of insecurity. Where does it come from? Maybe they are? Family background, that means uh, I would say uh, maybe uh, genetic, uh, generational issues. Now, now, now uh, it is said that let's say you may have an uh, ancestor four, six generations ago who had lots of anger. Now he passed away. But that anger did not pass down to somebody within the next three generations. It's like the heart attack. Now, when somebody got a heart attack in some Western countries, the doctor calls you, calls the whole family, and then tells you who will get the next heart attack. They tell that. They do the genetic mutations. Maybe the second son. So you be careful. You are the person who is getting that. Right? So genetically, some bad qualities are coming to us from our generations, from our ancestors. Now, you are doing ancestors' uh, puja, right? <laughs> you are respecting some ancestors, huh? you have some time, right, for respecting ancestors. So we have good stuff, but we also may have those things that coming from our previous ancestors. It is the same thing. Now, when I went to some funerals, some chanting places, those people said, Bhante Karma, right? Now, somebody is suffering. Now, one, when I went to one particular place, this person told me uh, that he got this disease only one out of million gets this neuro problem the protein of the neuro going away so whole neuro system is collapsing now definitely gonna die fatal karma i said i don't know but there is something like this maybe this is a bodily problem right not everybody in that family they said no immediate family members are okay two three generations what about somebody in that family lineage thousand years ago because we are evolving got this at that time and it is a genetically mutated and now going to victimize somebody it's a karma it is because you were born into this particular family that is why you are having this and then but the next uh, immediate next uh, generation will not get it too because too close to that the second thing that some people might be very aggressive is the environment if that person was grown up in a very aggressive uh, crime neighborhood, right? There are such places in our, in our uh, certain places in the world. They can be aggressive too. Remember the story, Jataka story, uh, what you call um, uh, Satti Gumba Jataka, the two parrots. Very good story. Two parrots were fallen away because of wind. Then one parrot fell onto the uh, thieves area. They were thieves, robbers actually. They are, they are doing home robberies actually. Every day they are planning on this. Today we are going to go to that area. There is a house. We saw somebody is not there. We are going to do a break-in over there. So he is always <laughs> listening to their conversation. Then there was another parrot who went on to a, who was uh, driven on to a hermitage. So the, the tapasas, they were all talking. Today we are going to practice meditation. We are going to do this good thing. So one king who was on the way to hunt, he was abandoned by his forces for whatever the reason. So he first walked into this area, the thieves area. Thieves have gone for the operations by that time. So one parrot came on to him, said, okay, uh, take him, kill him, uh, chain him. He said, who is this? <laughs> it's a parrot. He was very uh, afraid about what, what was happening. Then he uh, ran into another place. That place was uh, luckily the other parrot's place. Come here, please take a seat and uh, have this drink. He was very puzzled about this situation because of the environment, right? It's the environment. So I think uh, somebody can be very aggressive from genetic background or from the environment. But anyways, try to be a peaceful person. Wherever you go, be, should be able to be friendly. That is metta. Some people practice metta as a city meditation. But when they are in the normal society, they can't make friends. They can't keep friendships. They're going to be very troublemakers. Right? They don't know how to. Because by sitting down in one place, closing eyes, thinking metta is easier than 
be, uh, going to a kind of a crowd, understanding their behaviors and being friendly with them, which is more difficult. That is more difficult. That is where you have to practice metta. Each one is different. Learning from a book and then doing that is easy. May I be well and happy, peaceful. You have to do that and mostly the other thing. Because people are different depending on the time. So, non-aggressiveness. Last two. Kulesu Ananugid Dua. This one is the one we said, don't be greedy to anybody. Your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your children. Don't be greedy. Some parents are very greedy for their children. Very greedy about their children. Some parents are saying, Bhante, we would like them not to grow. So we are being <laughs> very greedy. You did a role, now let them grow. Let them understand the life in the proper way. Never ever uh, be greedy to people. Finally, Nacha Kuddang Samachare Kinchiye Na Vinyu Pare Pavadeyu. Not get blamed by the wise people. Who is a wise person? Somebody who always speak the truth. Some, some or maybe good words. Somebody who always have good thoughts. Somebody who always have good actions. Do good action. That kind of a wise person is very important. If those wise people blame you, criticize you, you did a wrong thing, you do, you do such bad things, you do immoral things, unwholesome things, it is not good. So you are living a life in a way that nobody is going to say, ah, you did a bad thing, you did a wrong thing. You are trying to understand what's going on. So these are the 15 skillful habits that you need to practice before, prior to the uh, 10 Kusala activities. This is what we learn in the first part of the Metta Sutta. This is what we learn from there. After that, what will happen? Uh, these are the seven things. Then I will leave uh, this conversation for a Q&A. Unlimited practice of Metta. What is Metta, Dhamma folks? What is Metta to you? What is loving kindness? Uh, goodwill towards other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So being, uh, you know, in a simple way is being friendly to everybody. Being friendly. Right? We have to be friendly to everybody. Every human being, every animal, every being. Because you remember what happened to that monk? There was a monk at the time of the Buddha. And he was practicing metta every day from morning to the uh, night. Always may I be well, may other people be well. But one day, he was bitten by a cobra in the temple, the same temple where Buddha was living. Then he passed away. Then other monks uh, told the Buddha, you know, that monk always practicing meditation, metta meditation, but the cobra <laughs> uh, killed him. How come it happened? Yes, it happened. There's a reason. The Buddha said, yes, he practiced meditation, metta meditation, he had metta, but he did not have metta towards certain snakes, certain snakes. So they did not feel that metta. So this cobra was that snake, one of the snakes. What does it mean? When we practice metta, we should be able to understand the flora and fauna, who is out there? You know, the Malaysian uh, uh, animals. You know, normally reptiles, wherever you go, you know, they could be here, you understand them, so you don't want to practice. That means we have to have a certain identification of these animals, uh, in this case, uh, rept uh, reptiles. Otherwise, when you say, may all beings be happy, how do we know? How do we feel it? You, you could say by language, it is included, but it does not go to those animals, they don't feel it. It doesn't mean you have to find out all the uh, zoological names of those animals. Uh, they don't even know either, these animals. At least you know these animals exist, these places. They could be flies, birds, right? So we have to practice. That means metta has to be practiced properly, in the right way, proper way. Like the prayers, when you do prayers, you have to pray properly, not improperly. Some people pray wrongly. Then they say, how many times we've been praying, nothing happens. My prayers are not answered. Why? Pray wrongly. <laughs> you have to pray properly. 